Hello, I'm Jyotika. Welcome to Excelling Psychology. This video is a continuation of part 1 of May-June paper solving, paper 1, variant 2. So, if you want to know answers from 1 to 5, that is my discussion of those answers, you can watch the previous part. I'll link it in the description box below. And uh, if you want to know what is my approach to this lesson, for that also you would have to watch part 1. Here they have asked question 6. I am just continuing directly. From the study by Pozzolo et al. Describe the line of presentation for target absent condition. As one rule I always tell my students to begin with a definition of whatever has been asked. Of course not uh, in an irrelevant manner. If they have just asked us evaluation for something and we start giving the definition. That isn't appropriate. But when it's a described question, why not begin with the definition of the concept asked? Unfortunately, the student does not begin this way for the answer. She would have easily scored one mark just for describing what a target absent lineup was in this study. Nevertheless, let's go through the answer. So she says that the target was swapped with another foil in the same position. That is correct. Also, she says the lineup included a sell out as a visual reminder, real target might not be present. That is also correct. I remember when this question was asked in the paper, lots of students got confused about can we give features which are overlapping with target present condition or do we have to give exclusive features which apply only to the target absent condition. There is no specification in the question that uh, you have to give exclusive features of target absent that's one secondly if you see the marks allotted are five that's a lot of marks and uh, there are no five exclusive points that you can give only about target absent condition in this study so logically also it should appeal to you that you cannot give five exclusive points so it is obvious that you can give points which are common with target present condition as well never uh, overthink a question stick to what has been asked uh, don't think of other possibilities that really confuses you and many times students end up writing wrong answers because of that if they haven't mentioned something like they want exclusive features don't think of uh, them yourselves they don't need to think extra beyond what has been asked in the next point the student says that foils were selected online for dora and diego now here the student has deviated from what has been asked they've asked for lineup presentation how the lineup was presented not how it was prepared so definitely credit will not be given for a point as to how foils were selected for the lineup then she says the foils for male and female actors were selected from 90 male and female again the same issue preparation is not to be discussed presentation is to be discussed all the pictures were in black and white and tightly cropped that is credit worthy because it is something that has to do with the presentation so there are three unique points here about the presentation and that's why the student scores three other possibilities of points she could have written include how many foils were there also uh, things like uh, the order of presentation like randomized order of presentation of photographs there are many such points if we see the pozzolo study about the lineups so any uh, four i would say of those points or features could have been given because i would reserve one point for a definition of what is target absent or just contrasting it with target present okay so this is a simple question describe questions are simple they directly require points from the textbook which are not even strengths and weaknesses the next question is suggest two problems that could arise if children were used as participants in the study by perry at all Sometimes in the paper there are questions which are very specific and they ask you give ethical problems that could have occurred or give methodological problems that could have occurred if children were there in the study. Here you are lucky because they just say two problems which means that you can take either ethical problems or methodological problems. In my opinion ethical problems are not too many in a peri type of study because it's a computerized task yes it can be distressing to some extent to imagine a stranger or an authority figure coming close to a person but i feel there are more methodological issues which are relevant to children in the sense the study is tricky methodologically it's complicated would be difficult to perform for children 
because if you see the instructions to be followed are quite nuanced in that study so the first thing which would come to my mind are methodological issues but as i said before you're free to take ethical ones as well let's see what the student has written here the student says children may not be able to give consent therefore a parent or guardian is required to give consent for them this is pretty common students do think of if children were used in the study the first ethical issue comes to their mind is parental consent undoubtedly we can talk about it as long as we make it relevant to the study hence researcher will not be able to gain, gain full consent of participants this is a highly generic point this is a highly generic point there it is no relevance to the study at all what is there about the peri at all study which warrants that children should know to some extent what they have to do in the study what is difficult about it is there something dangerous in the study is there something harmful is there something that would make student uh, the children uncomfortable for which their assent should be taken for the study nothing is clear from this point so maximum this point can score is 1 and you can see a second consideration has not been given by the student so as i've mentioned right at the beginning i would suggest methodological issues if i were to take parental consent i would just say that children's assent should be taken because they would have to be exposed to situations where they mentally have to imagine a stranger or an authority figure approaching them especially when it comes to children thinking of authority figures like teachers policemen or say or uh, anyone in authority approaching them like a principal or someone could be distressing to them because children are generally shy or anxious by nature so that's how i would connect it to the study and that is how it would be deserving of full credit for methodological issues in peri at all we see it is difficult to follow the instructions for children of course depending on their age but for generally when they say if children were used they mean younger children so you know to keep track of what is to be done in the sense they had to see a word as we see on the screen like supposing they see the word stranger here i'm talking about the cid paradigm so they have to see the word stranger they have to hold it in their mind as they see a fixation cross and then the animation begins and then they have to press the space bar at that distance at which they want the stranger figure to stop now if you think from a young children's point of view for a young children child to imagine or uh, you know sorry to you know memorize and retain or keep uh, hold it in their mind that oh it's a stranger that animated figure is a stranger who's coming towards me could be difficult their memory is little on the weaker side they're pretty immature and there are many trials to be done on the cid paradigm besides that even imagination of children could be weak so to just see a stick figure and to imagine oh it's a stranger an authority figure can be quite difficult for children similarly if we talk about experiment 2 to remember you know to compare uh, two sides left and right two different images on the screen and select the ones which they prefer instructions are simpler in that experiment no doubt but to judge the distance could be difficult for children their perception is weaker compared to adults so these type of points can be raised as to what is then the procedure of each of the experiments which would be difficult for children to perform for ethics as i mentioned uh, earlier if you want to talk about psychological harm you can talk about the distress aspect that for children to think of strangers or authority figures could be perplexing for them that would overlap with informed consent so another strategy you could take is take one ethical point of informed consent and another methodological point to do with memory or perception it's not difficult to score for these type of answers what i have noticed in general is in the textbooks no matter which of the three textbooks we select for the course the authors do not discuss every issue and debate for every study or for every uh, theory which is there because of that what happens is students i don't know they believe that only those can come which are then whichever textbook they are seeing or they just forget about the issues or debates or what it is they don't realize that of course any of the five issues at the es level can be asked so i i am not very sure about this but i think in most textbooks for peri at all 
issue of use of children has not been covered so students just come unprepared for these type of issues and they get pretty surprised if they asked in the paper textbooks cannot be exhaustive because cambridge can ask you any question whatsoever so it's not the fault of the authors or the textbooks that they don't cover every issue in the textbook neither is that the correct approach of learning you know if they were to give you every issue every possible strength and weakness and things your textbook would be really huge and you would end up studying nothing because students already they find the textbooks are uh, very loaded and in that case like uh, you know to have a heavier textbook than what is already their students would just be put off by it secondly there's nothing you can do to memorize each and every issue each and every evaluation point for every study no one's memory is that strong so it is good that they don't give you everything because the correct approach is that you have to be able to think independently logically and apply the points that you know in general to any study which is there that is why the questions are uh, unexpected or unpredictable and your application skills are being tested okay so don't be taken aback by these questions that's what i want to say rather be prepared have your good knowledge in general you know if children are used what are the general issues and have the ability to be able to apply it to any study and how do you gain that ability you gain it by doing a lot of question answering practice that's the only solution okay let's come to the next question two friends sabtu and joya are discussing validity of the study by pilyavit sabtu says the study has validity joya says the study does not have validity now the key thing for these type of questions i think i mentioned previously in this video only is to see do they want you to support both or any one because despite them saying either you know emphasizing say either one why is correct some students will uh, give meritorious points for both so sabtu is red, correct for this reason and joya is that one and don't be surprised to know despite the template been given here still some students will do the same thing they'll say sabtu and joya both are correct the way this student has answered is right first you name only one whom you are supporting so before writing the answer think about do you have a strong point for support or against validity and select accordingly okay now the justification she gives is that researchers have collected qualitative data and that allowed them to understand what were the reasons for the participants not helping uh the victim so we see in the study from their comments uh, from participants comments we can make out especially women's comments why they were not going forward to help the victim even if they wanted to so that helped the researchers you know meaningfully understand why people are choosing to help or not help the victim through a cost reward matrix in the study we see they have explained a cost reward matrix such that we consider both costs and rewards for both possibilities helping and not helping then we come to a final decision so that's what the student has spoken about here now uh, this is a little unusual point many of you all will feel because either you would be thinking about uh, ecological validity since it's a field experiment or you would be thinking about quantitative data being objective so calculating percentage of helpers increased validity due to objectivity which are right but this point is also correct though it's not the first thing which comes to mind use of qualitative data in any study does indeed give in depth data which does increase the validity of the study still i would give it 3 marks why not because the point is incorrect because the details are lacking for example like when we have to justify 4 marks either the student could have given some example of a comment which was made by the women such as it's for the men to help them or men are stronger i want to help but i don't know what to do those type of comment she could have given Uh, which would justify four marks for the answer or another way of elaborating further would to be just to explain what is the cost reward matrix in one line the explanation which is giving is not fully justifying four marks that's the issue as i have mentioned previously at least four unique points should be there for four marks 
Okay, next question is describe the psychology investigated in the study by Fagan et al. Four marks. Psychology investigated should be very easy answers for students because they are there right at the beginning of every unit, no matter which textbook you refer to. So, in fact, it should be the first thing you are preparing for the paper. Unfortunately, what is seen is students are not clear somehow on what to write for psychology being investigated, despite the fact that this for this syllabus, the way they have revised the textbook, they have made it clearer than ever before. When they ask you psychology being investigated, they want explanation of the key concepts of the study. So, uh, when it comes to like uh, writing this answer, many students, the mistake they will make is to give the aim of the study or to try to link the concepts to the results of the study. They want to know whether you understand the concepts by themselves theoretically or without reference to the procedure of the study when it comes to psychology being investigated. They do not want linkage to the procedure or they do not want you to state the aims of the study. That's the first thing. Like, Don't confuse between psychology and aims. What is psychology being investigated? What mental processes and behavior were investigated in the study? So they are looking for definitions of those. So when it comes to Fagin et al. study, it is operant conditioning that was investigated. Of course, we have to give the definition. So here the student says it's type of learning where the consequence of behavior determines whether the behavior would be repeated again or not. Here she should have gone further to explain what is reinforcement and punishment. That's desirable. In one line, because she's mentioned consequence. So in one line, if a behavior is punished, it will not be repeated. And if a behavior is rewarded, it would be repeated. That type of an explanation was suitable. Then she specifies elephants were trained to perform specific trunk movements were given reward to repeat them again. Now here she connects it with the procedure. But the way she connects it is to give an example of uh, how elephants repeat behavior if they are rewarded. So strictly speaking, when we link to the procedure, as I mentioned previously, it's not credit worthy. But because she has used it as an example and you know indirectly she is saying that when something is rewarded, it's repeated. So it does count and for an expansion of what is operant conditioning. So it is credit worthy. Here the student will get two marks for giving the definition of operant conditioning as an and an example. Those are two unique points which have been given. Just saying that operant conditioning was investigated does not get credit. To get further two marks, that is to score fully on this answer, the student should have given the concepts of primary and secondary reinforcement. As a rule of thumb, I always tell my students when it comes to psychology being investigated, you should give all the concepts which are there under psychology investigated when the question is coming for 4 or 5 marks. So you shouldn't skip any. Like I said, it's a rule of thumb. Of course, if you leave out one or two concepts but you're giving 4 exclusive points, you'll get marks. But on your side, to get a structure on how to answer, just try to cover all the concepts. Now coming to primary and secondary reinforcement is very fundamental to this study because they have used both in the training of the elephants. They have connected the whistle sound to the chopped bananas. So she should have just defined generally that primary reinforcement is reward which directly satisfies biological needs and secondary reinforcement are rewards that link to primary reinforcement and indirectly satisfy biological needs. That was very much required to score full. Okay, this question many students perform very poorly and uh, even when it comes to uh, like this is one similarity and difference and the other is that one eight marker is it supporting nature or nurture individual or situational explanation generally on eight marker students perform very poorly so before discussing this answer my direct suggestion is practice a lot of eight markers that's a weak point for students even more so than the ten marker here the question is, explain one similarity, one difference between Fagin et al. study, one other study. The student has selected Bandura et al. and she says the similarity is both have made use of structured observation. Identification is correct, but key thing is explanation. Both had behavioral checklists correct, which recorded many times the behavior was performed. 
yes in both studies they have recorded the number of times either of imitation being performed or trunk wash behaviors being performed unfortunately there is no linkage of structured observation to either of the studies it's not totally generic like the student has not generally explained what is structured observation she has identified a commonality but she has failed to link it to fagin and bandura these type of answers actually have a very simple structure there's nothing to get confused in them it's like name the similarity make the similarity explicit to the first study makes make it explicit to the second study i mean what is difficult about writing it this way so all the student had to do was say that in the fagin et al study the checklist was used to count how many times the elephants were performing trunk wash behavior such as trunk up bucket blow etc and see if they are meeting a success or pass criteria and when it comes to bandura et al the checklist was used to check imitation of the models aggression under categories such as physical verbal aggression to count how many of each type of behavior was performed by the child so that's all that needed to be done to score full 4 marks it's an 8 marker so 4 marks will be for similarity 4 for, for difference as of now what the student has written because she hasn't made it specific to either study she can just get a credit of 2 maximum for the similarity now let's see the difference she says that they studied fagin et al studied elephants in natural habitat bandura et al studied participants in a laboratory again this is mere identification of a difference and there is no further detailing or elaboration structure is similar name the difference which she has done but then talk about it in context of the first study and the second study or simply like when she says fagin et al studied in natural habitat what is the meaning of they studied in natural habitat she just had to elaborate on that in bandura et al in the laboratory what do we mean by laboratory for this study that would have helped her gain full marks so here she get 3 for fagin et al she could have just explained that the natural habitat was the stables of the elephants where they used to stay with their mahouts in nepal and for bandura et al she could have just mentioned that it was a special control setting with provision of different rooms different toys where children could imitate and showcase their aggression so special laboratory was made for that purpose so just for elaborating on those things she would have easily scored 8 scoring 8 marks is not difficult for these answers but like i said students make blunders on these 8 markers by giving very general points and despite seeing that the answer is 8 marks they give such few words that no way it justifies an 8 marker so where you can score easily losing marks is not wise keep practicing next is evaluate the study by baron cohen et al in terms of two strengths and two weaknesses and at least one of your points must be about ethics okay in a2 what we recommend is like start with the named issue here it's not compulsory in as but uh, definitely make sure not to lose sight like what happens is supposing students are taking ethics as a weakness so whatever is named if they decide to take it as a weakness and they're going to structure the answer as strength 1 strength 2 weakness 1 weakness 2 by the time they reach the weaknesses they forget what was the named issue don't be careless in writing your answers make sure you keep in mind what has been asked in the question the structuring is correct yes this is the ideal structuring go by strengths first and then weaknesses so organization is not an issue what is important in 10 markers is again practice standard recommendation which i would make which all teachers will make is keep a 10 marker ready for each of the core studies at the most what can happen is the named issue can change uh it could can be an issue which you haven't prepared for but at least three points you will have prepared except the named issue so at least you can come to a scoring range of 6 to 7 marks and then the named issue shouldn't be something which you know you're not able to write anything about so even like i'm taking the worst case scenario where you don't know anything about the named issue at least you'll get 6 7 marks if you've prepared for the rest and if you're able to write something also about the named issue even if not very well you can extend your marks even up to like 8 marks and of course if you prepare all possibilities 
you can score full 10 also on this answer like there's no restriction the key thing to scoring is you know either follow appeal format or just keep in mind to make a uh, study specific so point specific to the study some students when we tell them don't write generic answers make the point specific that much instruction is enough for them to write uh, relevantly some students they still get confused as to uh, how to make it specific in that case follow the peel format today the scope of this video is not enough for me to cover what is peel format you can watch some of the previous videos on my channel i have covered this or you can do a simple google search you'll easily find what is the peel format of writing and just stick to it so when you're preparing your answers prepare them using the peel format okay now as i told you the time is little short for me and i want to cover this paper today because then i want to cover paper 2 as well so let me go through this quickly so the student says the study is highly reliable which is true and she gives reasoning because it's highly standardized she says the revised ies test was standardized not only she says that she makes it specific by saying all participants had to see the same 36 pairs of eyes the images were in the same color now it's desirable if she would have specified black and white but it's okay she also says they of the same size and there were always four options again more desirable if she would have said four options for answering with three foils participants were provided with the glossary she could have said all participants or each participant and therefore the study could be replicated by other researchers this point is worthy of full credit because the point which she is making is explicitly named reasoning is given and reasoning is elaborated in context of the study next is another strength is data was objective because it was quantitative there was no interpretation required of researchers very desirable to write interpretation of what interpretation of how strong the participants theory of mind was or mentalizing ability was it's like the researcher was just going to go by the scores and decide whether the participant had a high a sound theory of mind or not but uh, just leaving it at no interpretation was required of what that does not become clear many students do make this point in some strength or the other that you know quantitative data is objective interpretation is not required subjectivity is not there but subjectivity regarding what or interpretation of what is never clear from their answer so make sure to work on these type of things also she says it was fixed choice participants were either right or wrong many places the student has a tendency to talk about it this that if you have a similar tendency try to be more specific reading can be difficult when you keep on saying it this that it's not clear to the examiner what you are referring to Yeah, she could have said the test was fixed choice or the ice test was fixed choice. Next is, so this increases the validity. Again, this point is credit worthy, but a little less. Like it won't get full marks because, like I said, subjective interpretation of what is not there is not very clear. Next is a weakness is that participants with uh, ASHFA suffered from psychological harm. one thing is to write very definitively something which is not evident from the study is tricky like if i say milgram they suffered psychologically very true because it's evident some of them had seizures baron cohen they suffered psychologically and we are not very sure so tentative language could be better they may have suffered i know this sounds like nitpicking but if you see the effect of the point changes like when you say may have suffered or did suffer then it puts a question why did they conduct the study if participants were suffering so try to write it you know when you write it should be like this can engage you more also with your psychology subject if you think about the reasoning and logic behind things rather than just writing so if you think about you know participants could have suffered this was a possibility that's a better way of writing like as it makes it more interesting to you also makes you think critically Okay so they may have not been able to identify the emotions which could have caused them distress with lower their self esteem again this point is credit worthy it makes sense but it should have been made more explicit by saying that they had a psychological disorder which is uh, related to social sensitivity like when it comes to autistic people that's the key problem which they are having that they are not able to 
uh, engage in social relationships and that is the reason why thinking about emotions can be perplexing to them that point is not very evident from what the student has written so things need to be brought about very explicitly or very directly so if she's saying emotions could be distressing why a key thing whenever you write a paper any subject any answer the examiner should never be left wondering why for any point which is made so the why should always be clear next is another weakness is group of hfas was a small sample compared to other groups as it was a volunteer sample had special interest in the study therefore could not be representative to all individuals with hfas this is a weak point because first thing in as you have 12 course studies you know that you have to know certain details memorized such as how many participants were there in which group now if you are choosing to make a point that the sample size was small you should immediately and automatically specify how many participants exactly were there why would you write a small sample and leave it at that why wouldn't you give the number it suggests to the examiner that you've been lazy about learning the numbers which you knew you should have so not giving the numbers in as core studies is not acceptable sample size needs to be specified if it is being used for evaluation it was a volunteer sample so generalizability is poor becomes a generic point who were the volunteers in this study what is unusual about them which would not be found in other people in the population that is how it would become relevant to this study so she should have mentioned that participants who were reading the autistic society magazine only were included but all autistic patients do not read the autistic society magazine therefore those people could be different in the population in terms of literacy interest levels or education levels and that is why results might not apply to them as they could be more or less able on the theory of mind i'm not saying exactly how i'm saying it should be written that way only but some hint of what i'm saying should be included such as what makes these volunteers different from others which is why generalizability is less otherwise just saying generalizability is less with what respect is not becoming clear so neither the sample size has been mentioned nor from where the volunteers have been obtained has been mentioned which makes this point very less credit worthy now this uh, answer is scored according to a table as you know today in today's video i don't have that much time to show the whole table to you and tell you where the answer falls so that i leave it to you as an exercise this answer falls in level 3 what is level 3 answer you can refer yourself uh, in the mark scheme and try to figure out that's your homework so according to level 3 answer i can put it between 5 to 6 mark band given all the criticisms of the answer which i made all the weaknesses i would put it as 5 out of 10 okay like i said it's your job to go through the mark scheme you've already seen how i have evaluated the answer so think about why i have put it in level 3 or in the 5 to 6 marks and nowhere else on that table okay so that's it for this video if you have any questions or feedback regarding this video put them in the comments box below if you personally contact me for videos that i put on youtube you will not get an answer from me i will definitely answer what you put down in the comments box if you're looking for tuition for any session i know especially you all are looking for october november sessions you can contact me on your, my personal number for that case i provide online tuition across the world oh, so my number is given below whatsapp number and my email id you can contact me there that's it for this video thank you for watching i'll try to upload paper to answers very soon goodbye